We now have a presentation of a proclamation for Muslim American Appreciation and Awareness Month. I would like to invite Munir Safi and Humera Nawaz with the Muslim Community Center of the East Bay to the lectern while I read the proclamation recognizing August as Muslim American Appreciation and Awareness Month. And then after I read the proclamation, you are welcome to offer comments. And if you like, take a photograph with the council. Thank you. So here we go. Whereas, enriched by the diversity of its residents, the city of Pleasanton takes pride in supporting individual religious freedoms for all and is strengthened by the contributions made by the many diverse religious and cultural traditions of its residents, including those who practice Islam. And whereas, Alameda County is home to over 90,000 Muslims who make innumerable contributions to the cultural, political, and economic fabric and well-being of our city, county, state, and nation. And whereas, mosques and local Muslim organizations, such as the Muslim Community Center of the East Bay and the Islamic Center of Zara, stepped in to help the entire community during the pandemic by donating funds, distributing food, and sewing masks for frontline workers, as well as educating their congregations about social distancing guidelines to keep the community safe. And whereas, though the Islamic practice of zakat, local Muslim organizations help, help give back to the community by providing grocery deliveries and financial assistance to local families, organizing quarterly blood drives, food drives, and backpack drives for school children, as well as many other charitable activities serving individuals and families throughout the community. And now, therefore, it, be it resolved, the Pleasanton City Council does hereby proclaim August 2022 as American Muslim Appreciation and Awareness Month to acknowledge the rich history and contribution of American Muslims in our community and may it have a lasting positive impact for our city, state, and nation. Yes. Go ahead and like Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Carla Brown, City Council members. Thank you so much for honoring our state's designation of August being Muslim Appreciation and Awareness Month. This is the seventh year that the state of California has recognized August as Muslim Awareness Month. And the fourth year, the city of Pleasanton and its city council has given this honor to us. Thank you so much for making sure that your residents feel proud to be living in the city and feeling that they're part of the rich fabric that makes Pleasanton so special. My name is Homera Nawaz and I'm a resident of Pleasanton for the last 25 years. I have actually been an employee of city of Pleasanton for a few years as well. I'm representing Muslim Community Center, as you said, which is located on Las Positas Boulevard, which takes great pride in building bridges between the city and the local community. As you very graciously told everybody that we have been supporting through Alameda County Food Bank and through our own community funds, food drives and weekly food distributions, along with many other charities that we support the community. This is our way of giving back and saying thank you. Muslim Americans have lived and contributed in these communities since this country's founding in very various ways. Sadly, in the last decade and a half, the impact of Islamophobia has been very real and our community has felt it. We have heard from our congregation members, women wearing their faith on their head in the form of a headscarf, in malls and shopping centers, hospitals of this progressive bubble that we live in very of feeling intimidated, which we never felt before. Our students, in a recent study done by Council on American Islamic Relations reports 49% of American Muslim students have experienced bullying. And worse, 38% of those surveyed, the bullying has been done by the teacher. In workforce, employees and applicants who are Muslims have filed lawsuits against employers and have won them based on religious discrimination. At this point, I would like to deviate a little and thank a person in this room. Who 
who made a huge impact for me on the day 9-11 happened was the first day gingerbread preschool was having back to parent night and my boss at that time becky hopkins supported a scarf wearing woman i had walked up to her and said becky i don't need to be here today because emotions are running high and i don't want to make any parent feel uncomfortable to this day, I remember, she hugged me and said, Humera, you belong here. Oh, <laughs> it's people like her and experiences like these that give her hope that our children will not have to face these discriminations and they will be able to conquer the device that we have built over the last few years. Once again, thank you so much, City Council of Pleasanton. We appreciate you recognizing and giving us this, this honor. We continue to, we hope that we will continue to build bridge, bridges with the City of Pleasanton. Right. Please stay for a photo. Yes. Three point three three presentation of the American Muslim Appreciation Awareness Month prop proclamation. Um, so the city council, we will present the American Muslim Appreciation and Awareness um, Month. We were going to present it earlier um, last month, but I know that we wanted to make sure you guys were included and, and you guys were able to visit. And so um, we would love to present this, uh, this certificate to you. And I will read a couple of the um, the first few sentence, uh, whereas freedom of religion holds distinction as a cherished right and fundamental value upon which the law and ethics of the United States are based. And the city of Dublin takes great pride in supporting individual religions, freedoms, and is strengthened by con contributions of its diverse population, including those Americans who practice Islam and the earliest Muslim immigrants, most mostly worked on farms and made significant contributions to early agricultural efforts. And approximately 1 million Muslim Americans currently reside in communities throughout California, the highest numbers in the United States and the citizens of the city of Dublin benefit from Muslim religion, um, education and empowerment organizations that operate within our city. And we welcome, Ahmad, please come forward. Uh, good evening and assalamu alaikum. I wanted to thank our esteemed city council and I love to be able to come here every year and thank you guys for all your support and for your recognizing the Muslim community in, of Dublin as an integral and welcome part of our larger Dublin community. Assemblymember Bill Quirk introduced this resolution in 2016 at a time of great turbulence and uncertainty, but Dublin and California have always stood for inclusion and have always been a welcome sanctuary for all. We're very happy to be here in 2022 in person with the community here in person to be able to celebrate um, the recognition of our community. Last year at this time, the city of Dublin pledged itself to partner with the community in welcoming refugees from Afghanistan. In this last year, we were able to help hundreds of Afghans relocate to the area and find a home and community here in Dublin and the local surrounding cities. Twice every month, our local community hosts a bazaar for newly resettled families to receive household goods, clothing, backpacks, books, and more for little to no cost. For the Muslim community center that many from Muslims from Dublin attend, Munir Safi, the director, and Sabine Asafali, our board member, have worked hard in our residence here, here in Dublin to constantly have an open door policy at the mosque that makes everyone feel welcome, whether it's their first time or they're a regular attendee. They've expanded their services to make the Eid celebrations, family events, and regular prayer services multilingual, environmentally friendly, and disability certified. Through a partnership with the Alameda County Food Pantry, um, MCC's sister Amina selflessly runs the food pantry where weekly thousands of pounds of food are given out to hundreds of families from all faiths throughout the Tri-Valley. I was fortunate to be able to volunteer there with my sons to help deliver food on a number of occasions. I would like to particularly mention 
um, Shazia Kajani and her son Zayan, who are residents here of Dublin and were featured in the Dublin Patch for their hard work with the Refugee Bazaar and for raising money to purchase laptops, computers, so that resettled families can have internet access for school, job hunting, and pretty much everything else that we do these days. Um, so their hard work is, makes us all proud to be Dubliners. These stories are just the tip of the iceberg for the ways that our local Muslim community regularly invests in our Dublin community. We're taught that civic service is a fundamental tenet of our faith. Those who are best at creation, those who are most compassionate with creation are the ones who attain an ultimate compassion, mercy, and closeness to the creator. I wanted to highlight these efforts because it's these stories of the human spirit rising above challenges that we all need to sustain us. I would also like to thank Samina Usman and Seema Bader from the Council of American Islamic Relations, who are constantly advocating for civil rights on behalf of all Americans. And for to particularly mention Seema's efforts, because she's running for the um, DSRD, a uh, local water district. And in the upcoming elections, Kashif Kadri will be running for Dublin City Council. It's not just what's good for a few, but what about what's good for everyone. And most importantly, about what's most in for those of us that are most in need that drives them to serve and to serve here in Dublin. We're proud of their willingness to serve and look forward to celebrating their elections. Um, Muslims and Muslim-run community organizations throughout the local area, particularly in Dublin, constantly strive for the greater good. There's Maristan that's focused on low to no cost mental health services for our local community, along with Zakat Foundation and our local resident, Minara Rahman, who coordinates food distribution throughout Alameda County and necessities for those most in need. I would also like to highlight some international organizations that are run out by residents here in Dublin. I personally work on an international economic development project supported by the United Nations Development Program, not only for its economic impact, but for the international conflict resolution, promoting equity, environmental sustainability, and fair and livable wages for economies across the developing world. Muslims in Dublin have a strong and global impact that we can all be proud of. However, there are many who are focused right here in Dublin. Samir Qureshi, who serves not only um, to politically organize our communities and advocate for our use of our First Amendment rights, but also serves as the chairperson for the Dublin Senior um, Center's Advisory Board. And Sobia Qureshi, who spent many, many years working on PFCs and PFSOs and on the Dublin Partners in Education. And then, of course, I have to do the, my shout out for DPI because they're doing registration right now. It's open. And I'm going to get a message from Rich later that did you mention that? So I did my shout out for DPI. How much did Rich pay you? Did you <laughs> <laughs> like them, there are many others, Shazia Nomani, Shaheen Parker, Rabia Adil, Nida Ahmed, and more, who work year after year to make Dublin students their primary and central concern. Participating in these efforts is essential work of being part of a community. Last and far from least, I want to thank Elisa Shahab and Kaif Jelani, who are two high school students who recently graduated from DHS. Elisa was active in the Dublin Inclusion Project and was the president of the Muslim Students Association at DHS and was, uh, gave a powerful speech at DHS's last graduation ceremony. Kaif was honored as a National Merit Scholar and started a nonprofit organization called Youth Coding Workshop that organizes high school students to teach their younger counterparts how to code. And they've had chapters at every middle school in the area and are expanding to elementary schools as well. Their dedication to inclusion and service as young people has propelled from active service in high school to now attending esteemed universities. Both are an inspiration to students coming up the ranks and to those of us who have already graduated as well. These students remind us to be proud of who we are, to always respectfully expect um, to be seen for our Muslim identities, but to actively serve all members of our community. This is a lesson that I would like to take forward into the next year and to thank you all again for the time and recognition of our Muslim community. Thank you very much. Honestly, thank you for, for naming all, all the individuals that you did because they are part of our community and people like Samir and his wife, they give up so much of their volunteer time, this, you know, the students at Dublin High School, and they just want to be able to be part of the community and also show that 
you know, being involved and um, making your community even better. And so it's all about all of us pitching in. And I know during these difficult times, um, you know, Congressman Swalwell was there. Even Supervisor Halbert was doing funding and, and bringing families to be able to help them. So I think we just live in a great area where we can all come together. And it's the key role players that help, but also the community. And we just keep doing that over and over again because it's very contagious to keep doing positive things like that. I Absolutely. know I want to actually give um, Councilman Rakuma guy uh, a couple minutes to speak because I know that he wanted um, he also wanted to say something last time and, and he's uh, via Zoom this afternoon or evening. Yeah, uh, it's so great to see everyone here and I'm, I'm glad we were able to do this where the community could come and uh, I, I wish I could be there in person uh, to see you and, and to be part of the, the photo. You know, we've been doing this now for uh, several years. I think it's a great tradition. And I love in the in the uh, proclamation how it says uh, towards the end that uh, it is it is appropriate for us to promote awareness of uh, American Muslims in Dublin and across the nation and to extend to them the respect every American deserves. And I think that's uh, that's so important that we are reminded of that. Um, there there are still there are still challenges uh, around perceptions and lack of awareness in our country, and we should daylight that. Um, but here in Dublin, uh, all are welcome, and we make concerted effort uh, to ensure that our residents understand that. So thank you for uh, being here tonight, and uh, really happy that we are able to to do this. Thank you. Did you guys want to say that? Um, I, I want to echo my colleagues. Thanks. Um, but also uh, talk about, you know, we, we highlighted the fact that you named an awful lot of people and the communicate, the, um, contributions that they have made to our community. Um, and you mentioned a couple of tiny little things that you do. Um, but you glossed over your own contribution to the city of Dublin. Um, you don't just work for the food bank and for international and national foundations, but you do an awful lot for the city of Dublin. And, um, certainly the Koreshis do. And, um, Shazi Nomani and just so many other people and Samina and everybody else, but you do a lot for the city of Dublin as well at Cottonwood Creek and with other committees at Dublin schools and all of those things. And so I, I just want to make sure that we are all taking a moment to thank you for your commitment to the city of Dublin and the residents here in Dublin, as well as to the greater Muslim community and the greater Tri-Valley community. And so that needs to be said as well. So I'm, I'm really pleased that you come every year and you highlight the contributions that the Muslim community as a whole makes to the city of Dublin. But the, the contribution that you make to the city of Dublin too does not go unnoticed by those of us that live here. So thank you very much. Thank you. Please come forward and we can um, present the, the certificate too, but also would love to take a picture. Our next proclamation, item 6.2, is uh, recognizing the San Ramon Valley Islamic Center and the San Ramon American Muslim Community for the contributions of American Muslims to the San Ramon community. Uh, is Sobia here? Did I pronounce that right, Sobia? And uh, you brought with you your vice president. Is it, is it Thiessen? Okay, and Nadia, you're... That was a tough one to figure out. <laughs> Please join me up here. We have a proclamation for you. Recognizing the San Ramon Valley Islamic Center and the San Ramon American Health Community for their contribution to the San Ramon community. Whereas San Ramon is home to the San Ramon Valley Islamic Center, which is dedicated to serving the spiritual needs of the San Ramon Muslim community and promoting interfaith cooperation by providing an environment for dialogue, education, and fellowship. And whereas the SRBIC has provided many volunteer services to the general law community, including but not limited to the following. Partnering with the International Rescue Committee to support newly arriving refugees to the Bay Area and help with apartment setup for families. That has got to be a job itself. Parking, I'm sorry, packing and distributing 100,000 pounds of food staples and masks to at risk communities in the Bay Area through their You Are Not Alone program in partnership with Sport Life Foundation and other Bay Area <laughs> Sponsoring the SRPIC Blood Drive, the American Red Cross. Being one of the largest donors to the Contra Costa Food Bank, donating twenty-five dollars to $30,000 every year. 
In addition to the estimated 150,000 donations to community members in need, maintain a section of Highway 680 southbound as part of the Adopt the Highway program. Whereas Muslims have been part of the U.S. history from the beginning and have contributed to the production of wealth and construction of the nation, they are also part of the rich history of the civil rights. And whereas almost 10,000 Muslims reside in Pakistan County and make innumerable contributions to the cultural, political, and economic fabric and well-being of California and the United States. And whereas American Muslims are teachers, lawyers, doctors, social workers, tech workers, nurses, and business owners, among numerous other value professions, as well as heat builders, activists, entrepreneurs, and politicians. And whereas the California City of Center has recognized the month of August 2022 as American Muslim Appreciation and Awareness, and whereas it is appropriate to acknowledge and promote awareness of the millions of valuable contributions American Muslims in California and across the country and extend to them the respect and camaraderie in the American community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of San Juan does hereby proclaim its appreciation for the efforts of the San Juan Valley Islamic Center and the American Muslim community and contribution to the San Juan community. Thank you for the lasting positive impact they have made towards the advancement of our city center. Thank you, sir. Okay. I'm doing this lightly. <laughs> we want to speak to the cameras that keep going. I'll let you hold this. And who wants to be the first speaker? Speaker here, being short. Okay. Thank you. Okay, take 40 minutes. In the name of Allah, most beneficent and most merciful. Mayor Hudson, Council Member, thank you for honoring the American Muslims of San Ramon with the proclamation for the recognition of the American Muslim Month. The San Ramon Valley Islamic Center was set up more than 25 years ago, and our members have been a vibrant part of this community. At our center, we have witnessed generation of, a generation of American Muslims grew up, go to school, work, and eventually returning here to grow their families. In the past year, San Ramon Valley Islamic Center held blood drive with the American Red Cross as one of the largest donors to the Contra Costa Food Bank during our Ramadan food drive. Also, um, our team member, our community members are also part of the Community Highway Cleanup Program. In the last years, the San Ramon Valley Islamic Center, together with other community organizations in San Ramon, rallied more than $100,000 of resources to help the displaced people from Afghanistan. We, the, the center also received a $50,000 grant, grant from Welcome USA towards our refugee relief effort, which were, and we were one of the 30 organizations across the whole United States to have received that grant. So once again, we thank you for the proclamation and we wish everyone a good evening. Yeah. Did you want to speak? No, you have to introduce yourself. No, nope. please don't go away yet. Sabina, the comments will start with this data and we'll move down the street from the council. Well, I just want to say thank you for everything you do in the community, and especially I know I've been part of some of the food drives and uh, the things we do, and particularly during Ramadan when we are not eating as Muslims and being able to distribute that food. So appreciate everything you've done in the community and. Thank you, ladies, for serving on the board there. Well, I also want to thank you very much for all the work you do. And I, I know you, you do a lot in terms of particularly welcoming uh, people from overseas and uh, your food drives. And, and we thank you very much. You know, you used to, we used to be across the street from you. You know, our city hall was across <laughs> the street. And, and so uh, it, it was always uh, such a good relationship there. We've moved over here, but thankfully we still have a good relationship. So thank you very much for what you do. Mark. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you very much uh, for all your contributions, the sponsorships and the food drives and the, and the distribution, Red Cross support. That's all just fantastic. You know, faith is such an important aspect of our community. And, and I just want to thank you uh, and the Muslim community for all they've done for their, their contributions uh, for our community. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor Burroughs. Thank you. Thanks for all your services. If I remember right, you also provide auto um, uh, donations, right, to help the families. 
Is it MCA? Because when I was looking at my used car donation, so one of the things I reviewed and I felt the best place to donate is to MCA. So I donated my car to MCA at that time. So that do must, right? So yeah, so thanks. I know uh, the services that you do is fantastic it, and especially the interfaith. Uh, that that plays a key role to keep uh, our community safe and especially this is definitely an important day for me the timing uh what happened in albuquerque uh so that's not acceptable in any community especially in our nation so it's very sad that these things are happening and um, it's good that we are recognizing your contributions and you're mm -hmm. always welcome to let us know if how we can help you and make it much better thank you yeah, I, uh, along the same line, um, my neighbor used to be, uh, would always invite me over. Uh, I heard actually at one of these meetings like this, that he passed away, uh, Abed Farouk and Amira, and I was there at Ravina. Um, and, you know, it's just, uh, it's one of those things to highlight on what you just heard from Sridhar. Uh, once you become neighbors, most of the other stuff sort of fades away. But then there's that moment that comes up that you know something just that should not happen i'm amazed right now and you hit on it and i wanted to highlight this how many calls i get about visas coming out of afghanistan that people are still trying to get out of tajikistan or somewhere to get over here and I'm, i almost want to tell them why don't you just go to mexico and walk across the border everybody else is but it's not funny i mean they, these people are trapped there in fear of their lives so I don't know what can be done. We've tried going back through um, congressmen. Uh, we're kind of in between two congressmen right now. Um, but I, I know it's something that just can't stop because there's still a lot of people there that want to get out. And that program that you have, helping these people get uh, reacquainted into our community or get acquainted into our community is much needed. So I can't thank you enough. Uh, any last words you'd like to say or? or? Our interfaith um, program with. Well, is he going to give a speech, or is he just going to hide over there? <laughs> you you want to come up and say something? Uh -huh. To just to make sure that we're all you know here for each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say something quick. It's uh, it's an honor being part of this community, and uh, mm -hmm. always coming here always feels homey. I mean, this is. A good city that's open-minded, that's receptive to all religions, and we're we're really happy to be a part of it. Yes. That's kind of the sum of it. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you, and please stay with it. There's still a lot of work on those visas. <laughs>
Whereas Muslims have been part of the U.S. history from its beginning and have contributed to the production of wealth and the construction of the nation, they are also part of the rich history of the civil rights movement. Over 90,000 Muslims live in Alameda County and make innumerable contributions to the cultural, political, and economic fabric and well-being of our state and our country. And whereas the COVID-19 pandemic forced the temporary closure of the Islamic Center of Livermore and other mosques in the Tri-Valley, during this time, these mosques and community organizations provided online programming and service sermons with small faith group prayers outside. They also answered the call for help by donating funds, distributing food, and by sewing masks to help those on the front line. And they have educated their congregations about social distancing guidelines and practices to keep the community safe. Now, therefore, the City Council of the City of Livermore proclaims August 2022 as Muslim Appreciation and Awareness Month and thanks the members of the Islamic Center of Livermore for their contributions to the city and encourages members of the community to come together to celebrate our diversity. And that's on behalf of the City Council of Livermore and the actual proclamation. I'm going to see if I actually can hold it up here. Oh, no, it really doesn't work. Um, that will be delivered to uh, to the Islamic Center um, tomorrow or the next day. Thank you so much. Hello, Council. Yes. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much for allowing me to speak. This is Munir Safi with the uh, Muslim Community Center. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you so much for honoring our state's designation of August being Muslim Appreciation and Awareness Month. Uh, this is the seventh year this designation has happened in California, uh, and this is the second year this happened in Livermore. I can tell you the hundreds of Muslim families in Livermore and the nearly 15,000 Muslims in the Tri-Valley. We truly appreciate the Livermore City Council presenting this proclamation today. Uh, so I'm representing the Pleasanton Muslim Community Center. We um, serve the entire Tri-Valley. Uh, we're a vibrant regional mosque, and we've been on uh, in Pleasanton for the past 11 years. And I'm also joined by colleagues and congregation from the Islamic Center of Livermore. They're all, they were watching online and probably are still watching. Uh, I just want to quickly say, American Muslims, we've lived and contributed to our community since our country's founding. In the last decade and a half, the impact of uh, Islamophobia has been real. But despite this, we continue to do our blood drives, our voting drives, our highway cleanups, our uh, weekly food distributions. Uh, we have an open door policy at our Friday services. We serve as a Red Cross disaster site, uh, host ESL classes, interfaith uh, events, open houses. Uh, we're a green mosque, special needs friendly mosque. So you can hear we're just part and parcel of our community. And I can tell you that this recognition makes a world of difference for your Livermore constituents who are Muslim. So again, on behalf of Livermore residents that are Muslim and Tri-Valley residents who are Muslim, we thank you so much for this proclam proclamation and this recognition. Thank you. Well, thank you for all you do. And, and thank you, uh, Councilmember Monroe, for uh, uh, recognizing that he was still in the audience. So thank you very much. Thank you.